Hello folks, um, I've brought you to my dream peg today on the River Trent. So behind me you can see wonderful, beautiful day we've got here and we are fishing the River Trent at Bleasby, uh, just near Hazelford Care Home. Um, I think back in the day it used to be a pub called Fox and Gauntlet, some of the old Trent lot um, talk about it and I, I think it's a really good area. I've had loads of great, uh, great days on this particular stretch of river. It's absolutely fantastic, really varied, bream, roach, skimmers, dace, all sorts to catch. So I thought this would be a good place to come for my, um, my dream peg. So a little bit about me and my angling. Um, it's a long story, but I know you're all desperately interested to hear all about it. I, I, start, I got into fishing, as most people do. My dad took me, my granddad used to take me. I grew up on the banks of the River, River Derwent in, in Derbyshire. So I managed to fish that most days after school. Caught all sorts, to be honest. Um, we used to catch trout and grayling, odd perch, chub, things like that. That got me into my river fishing early doors. And basically, uh, it sort of evolved from there. I started going match fishing a bit when I got a bit older. My dad used to take me to Derby and fish on there and Belpe used to fish with the lads there on the river. Um, and then sort of as I got a little bit older, went through college and that, I met a good friend of mine, good angler, Craig Hawksworth, one of my best mates. And his dad actually got me fishing in the open circuit. And one year asked me and Craig to fish on the Tidal Trent in a Teams of Four series they were running on there. And that was sort of the, that was the trigger for me. I absolutely fell in love with fishing the Trent, match fishing circuits and open matches. I got really into it. And um, a few years down the line, uh, I've managed to qualify for three river fests now. Um, and just recently I've done quite well, managed to come fourth in the, the one at Burton Joyce, which is a local venue to me. So I'll be keen to get back in that again next year when it's, when it's on. Um, but yeah, basically match fishing is a big part of my life. I absolutely love it. So it's just um, as, mu as much as I can get out, I like to get on the Trent to be fair. Team commitments in the summer with my team browning hot rods, but mainly it's a case of uh, trying to get out on the river as much as I can. I absolutely love the Trent. So hopefully today we'll be able to catch a few bits and bobs on the Trent. We're thinking roach and dace. I've already managed to snare a few on the seed early doors, which is looking good. Um, a few roach on the feeder as well. So hopefully we'll be in for a really good day. Let's talk to you about my rigs now. A um, bit of a theory, similar to me feeder fishing, I like to have a, a range of tackle set up on a flowing venue uh, to keep changing things, chopping and changing between heavy and, and medium sort of size rigs and lighter rigs. So exactly the same with the feeder fishing. Um, my float fishing gear, starting with the heaviest of the setups. Um, all these rigs are on top five for today and uh, it's a six elastic, it's 016, Browning Hybrid Mono. Uh, this is a three gram float. So we've come down to an, an Olivet. Some stringer shot underneath it to kick the rig out straight. Some pairs of tens, about five inches apart. And then a six inch hook length with a sphere match size 18. The hook length material is 012. Um, when there's a few fish about, I think there's no, no need to fish too light, especially on flowing water. The bait's nipping past them, they're gonna be snatching at it. I don't think you need to fish super light all the time. So that's my heaviest rig, three gram. Then same float, same elastic on a top five again. This is a two gram rig, same float, same pattern, but the two gram version. So this is like in the middle um, size rig. Again, an Olivet, string a shot underneath it. Now single number tens, similar sort of pattern and one extra dropper. Um, this is slightly more strung out than the previous rig. Um, again, with an 18 sphere match, 012 hook length. So that's sort of a, a slightly lighter version of the previous rig. And 
same as before. The lightest rig, again on a top five. This is a six elastic again. Now this rig's a little bit different. I've got number tens strung out from probably about two to two and a half foot from the hook. Now these number tens are only about 10 to 15 mil apart. Getting slightly wider down towards the hook. There they're about two centimeters apart, so 20 mil apart. And then I've got number 10, four inches, another four to five inches, I've got a number 10, six inch hook length. Again, a size 18 sphere match, 012 hook length. Now this is the lightest rig, I'd use this for, for hemp and through the water. But the idea is with those three rigs, I've got lots of options. A heavy rig for sort of slowing it down, fishing slightly over depth, tripping a bait through. A two gram rig would be for dead depth, running at them. And then I've got a gram rig through the water, slightly under depth, so I can fish hemp, baits like hemp, cast a single maggot if the fish are taking it on the drop. Okay, ground baits. Um, the ground baits mix I've gone for today, this is the mix I tend to use on the River Trent. Base mix, brown in black magic, champion's choice black magic. Lovely dark mix and makes a really good base mix. It's quite sticky as well, which is ideal for running water. And I mix that 50-50 with quick skimmer, it's Browning's new range. This is a really lovely mix um, and it's very, very sweet, which I like, uh, just like me. Okay, so I've started the session um, on the feeder, which was what I would normally do on the Trent, to be fair. Have a look on the feeder, ground bait feeder, and see what's happening. I've had a few bites off roach and dace, which is a really good sign today, because I wasn't sure what sort of fish we were going to catch, if we were going to catch many fish at all, to be honest. But it's a really good sign to catch a few roach and dace early on the feeder. But what I've come here to do today, and I think what's going to be the primary tactic, is catching roach on the pole. So I've put some ground bait in, I've cupped a few rich balls in with some hemp, some casters, a little bit of chop worm and a few dead maggots. And then I've balled a few over the top as well. So I've let that settle whilst I've been fishing the feeder. I'm gonna have a little look now and see what's, uh, see what's occurring. I've started on the three gram rig, heaviest rig of the three. So the beauty of this rig is I can, uh, just slow it down a touch right over the top of that ground bait because at the start of the session after you've balled it the fish are going to be straight in over the top of that ground bait right where that ground bait is so feeding a little bit of hemp with a view to catch on hemp later on the lighter strung rigs but i'd expect most of the fish to come over the top of the ground bait it's quite pacey today so i didn't want to chuck the ground bait too far down my peg because i'd expect I expect the fish to be right on it. So I'm just getting over the top of the bait now. There's one. Doesn't look like a massive fish. Yeah, that's what we've come for. A little roach. So, 
what I'm hoping to do now is try and work out where those fish are in my peg. I've put that ground bait in and that came straight, that, that bite came straight over the top of the ground bait, maybe even a touch above it, which is a good sign. So with that in mind, I'll carry on with the heavier rig to begin with. Like I say, size 18 hook, 012. Don't want to fish super light to begin with because there is some skimmers. There's some big perch. Just a case of loose feeding. This rig's just set slightly over depth. So if I touch it or slow it down a touch, it's not going to lift up too high in the water. That was a bite. Right on the ground bait again. Like I say, early in the session, when you've balled it, cup some ground bait in, a lot of fish are going to come into the peg, all competing for bait. There's one. Lovely. And a little roach. So roach fishing in general on the Trent, it's absolutely fantastic. I'd say it's one of the hot spots in the country for roach fishing. Um, you can be fairly aggressive at times. The shoals of roach are absolutely massive. Um, and if you get amongst them, I think to be fair, some would argue, but catching them on hemp can be really, really dangerous. There's some fantastic hemp anglers on the Trent. If it tends to turn to hemp fishing, you just seem to be catching bigger fish. Now, ground bait, maggot and pinky, caster, they all have the days, but it tends to be starting on ground bait, then maybe looking to catch on hemp a little bit later on. That seems to be the way. Now, I've had some big, big weights of roach on hemp, and this year in particular, I've been fishing hemp on running line, even on bollows and wagglers. Um, it's just another bait at the end of the day. People associate hemp with light, faffy rigs. It doesn't have to be like that. Finding the right size rig for the depth of water and the size of fish you're catching is really important. So I'm just gonna drop down now to a two gram. It's a little bit heavy. It looks lovely, so I can slow it down a touch. But with roach fishing, you often find a little bit more finesse is better. So this is the two gram rig, slightly more Strung out, again 18, size 18, sphere match. Um, yeah, but going back to the weights of roach on the Trent, often through the summer this year, you've needed in excess of 20 pounds. There's been some really big weights recorded, over 30 pounds this year, roach alone, which I think is really incredible to be fair. And it's such lovely fish, fishing. I mean, in venues like this, and you can fish a pole over ground bait, bit of loose feed, some strung rigs. I don't think there's anything better. Fantastic. It's just a case of putting it to them how they want it. And it can be a game of cat and mouse, to be fair, until you find how they want it. It's just a case of trying to work out what's best. Now, I prefer, if I can, to run the rig at them. I was talking earlier about slowing it down, but every day can be different. I think more often than not on the Trent, letting the rig run through at pace seems to be better. I'm not sure if everyone would agree with me there, but I tend to find letting it run through at pace 
is the best way to catch the roach. Now, all my rigs are on top fives. It's quite deep, quite pacey here, but even if it was shallower, I'd still want to fish on top five to search the peg. The rig's working properly further down your peg and you can, you can search a bit more. Especially with, with loose feeding, you tend to have two killing zones, really. Main sort of zone would be over the top of your ground bait, which I cooked in earlier. But as you're loose feeding, you'll tend to catch those loose feed fish further down your peg where that hemp, caster, hitting the bottom and you'll find more often than not the bigger fish are hanging off the back of the ground bait especially if you're feeding hemp if you can run over your ground bait maybe miss a bite you can let it go again and have another another bite of the cherry which is obviously favorable starting to get a bite every run down now it's just a case of trying to sort them out that's a better fish like i said a bit further down your peg where that loose feed's going the soon onto the loose feed and that tells you sort of what sort of day you're going to be expecting to have. If you're catching fish, the bigger fish on your loose feed, you know it's going to be a loose feed day. I'm trying to knock my catapult in. So if it's going to be a loose feed day, you know you're going to be reaching for that strung rig earlier in your match. And uh, maybe those heavier rigs aren't going to be, aren't going to be, aren't going to be right on the day. But again, having that variety set up just gives you options when it comes to searching your peg. Now, this particular venue in the past, fishing heavier rigs and inching them through has been the way to catch skimmers. Maybe when it's a bit warmer and there's some more, there's some more skimmers feeding closer in, you do tend to catch inching through heavier floats, maybe even a little flat float. So, I'm catching quite well now on a two gram rig, Olivet and a few number 11s, or a few number 10s, sorry. I've been loose feeding steadily hemp now for quite a while. So I'm just gonna have a little look at hemp fishing. Now, as regards putting it on the hook, I'm not someone to, you know, there's all sorts of ways of hooking hemp. People tying bits of cotton on or bits of elastic or trying to lasso it and all sorts. And I've had a go at all sorts to be fair, but I find with a decent sized hook, just push it into the top of the, the flat bit of the kernel, out through the side like that, providing the hemp's cooked all right. It'll stay on for a couple of fish. So, like I say, loose feeding, hemp over the top of that ground bait line. You tend to find the bigger fish will feed on hemp seed. And that'll be a little bit further down your peg. Obviously the flow taking the loose feed downstream a touch. And hopefully there'll be some slightly bigger ones waiting for us. That was a bite, which is a good sign. Much lighter rig, strung out, so it's falling through the water. And I can hold this rig up a bit, let that hemp waft up in the water a bit, and hopefully fool one of these roach. Beautiful day now. It was misty when I got here this morning. And um, 
sun's burnt through, it's beautiful. Sunbathing weather. There we go. What was I saying about bigger roach on hemp? Little fish there, straight over the top of the ground bait. Just shows you, not, it's ju not just the big fish eat the hemp. I think it's why it's such a good, why it's such a good attractant really for all species of fish. You know when it's not right with hemp fishing because you, start, you miss a lot of bites. You can get indications, but you can't hit any. And that is, that's usually a sign to put it down. That's a bit bigger. Now, the way I look at it is, if I'm not getting a fish every other run down, it's not right when it's hemp fishing. Knowing when to put it down is the key. That's a nice fish. Lots of matches have been lost fishing hemp, definitely. Getting indications, you think, oh, they're gonna come in a minute, they're gonna come, they're gonna come, and then next thing you know, there's 20 minutes left. So knowing when to stop, when it's not right, is definitely a big part of hemp fishing. I've been there myself. So, some people think it's too faffy, it's too slow to put on the hook. Now, providing you can just take your time and make sure it's hooked properly, like I say, it's not going to drop off. And then big roach definitely love it. So you tend to find just as where your bites are, that's a nice fish. They're on it now, look. If you slow the rig down just a touch, just before it gets to where, the, where you've been getting your bites, it just lifts up a touch, the hemp just lifts up a touch and you, you feel another one. Beautiful. I have had a lovely day today on the River Trent. Um, I would say hemp seed was probably best. Strung rigs, loose feeding. On a really cold day like today, um, I'm really, really impressed how it's fished. And if you fancy a day catching some silvers, get yourself down to the Trent.